Hey Soul Tribe, it's Shauna here, and I really hope that you're resonating and enjoying these Twin Flame series, and I'm really excited to bring you these interviews with people in our own community. Start. We'll start talking. Everybody, this is Tracy Langston. She's, uh, I said that right? Langston? <laughs> I don't know. Langston. Langston. Well, you got a southern right. accent, so, uh, you know. I'm La southern. Southern. So... You know, she's a relationship coach and she's talking about uh, Twin Flame Union and the healing journey to Union. And, you know, me and Tracy, we've known each other for a while now. We've been in the same Twin Flame circles. And I guess we met the way all Twin Flames meet, looking for answers <laughs> I don't know, right. and support right. and, you know, comfort and in, in, in something that is like, you know, you, you kind of get lost in the beginning, you know. So, mm -hmm. um I, I know that you know you you're you're with your husband. You've been married for how long? You've been married four years. You've been married four years. You've been together how long? We've been six years. Six years, right? Six years. So you know everybody thinks that oh uh, they're they're running to you. Well, oh, the thing about it before I get started is that your your um, dynamic is a little bit different than some people. And I've I've talked about this before. Is that people are on. People have a set concept of how they think the twin flame journey should go. It has to go this certain way, and this is the the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's set in this box, right? Like oh, everybody right. says it's got to go this way, and that's not true because when we we get in these twin flame dynamics, what it is is that before we're before we're born. We're in the higher realms and we're right in our contract. And we say, okay, this is how we want it to play out depending on how we need to heal and grow. So your dynamic is different than my dynamic and another friend of mine. So you're healing with your counterpart and you're married. I'm healing separate from my counterpart, but we are in communication. And then my, I have another friend that's not here, but she's been separate from her counterpart for a year now and hasn't heard nothing from him. <laughs> so, but we're gonna talk about your journey, your journey to union. So, and when we make those soul contracts in those higher realms, um, we, this isn't our first time here. So we've had many, many lifetimes and there's karma that has to, to be played out as well right. between the, the, the twins, I believe. Yeah. I think you're going to have to talk a little louder. I don't know if, the, can you guys hear her good? Yeah. Can they hear me? That's better. Can they hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm all the way up. Is all right. Better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I can move it a little closer. Not. I, I've got my headphones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to make sure they can hear you. What okay. you're saying. Okay. They can hear me. Okay. Can you guys hear a good? A little louder. Just a little louder. A little louder. That's okay. loud. I can talk louder. But now it's better? vibrating. Now it's vibrating. Try. My sound. Yeah, your sound was vibrating. You're too loud. Too loud. Okay. How is this? Can you hear okay now? Is that better? I'll push the phone a little bit closer. Okay. Because she's on she's on uh, um, she's on Facebook Messenger, right? So I'm filming this with another device so she can be on TikTok Live. So, okay. All right. Go ahead with your story. Well, I'll do my best. Okay. I'll, I'll do my best to talk loud enough. Okay. You're you were talking about your story and about their, how there's karma and like oh I was saying that you know a lot of there's also a lot of karma that has to to be dissolved for the individual um, as as they come as they cross paths right right but I mean so people always want to know like they always want to know what so how do you get to union how how did you get there let's talk about that first. First? First. We'll talk about okay. that first. We'll go in stages. Like, you know, the question is, well, how did you okay. get there? How did you achieve it? What? Um, well, I would consider that I'm still in the process of, of being healed and in union with myself. I mean, it's it, because it's not about the other person at all. I mean, I went through, we went through almost two or three years of being married but actually kind of energetically separated 
uh, if that makes sense. Right. Like, we weren't even sleeping in the same beds. We were not functioning in uh, any kind of, uh, not a dysfunctional relationship way. Right. But there was just nothing there. It was like we were protected in this separate bubble, and we were just not able to interact if we did, it was, it was repel, repel, right. repel. This is why and I think, got, right, this is why I think that separation is so important for the twins. I mean, yeah, you did, I mean, just the way your journey played out is that you decided to try to have, uh, you know, heal with each other. But I think about my own dynamic and I was thinking there's no way I could do what you're doing. There's no way I would heal. It's extremely difficult. Yeah. And, and it took, uh, I mean, I would say we spent probably a year literally in stagnant, stuck, just every day, just, just getting by. We didn't have bad interactions. We yeah. had not, not no good, great interactions, but we were just kind of like just, we were so burnt out from all of the... Because you guys and, feel each other. You're triggering each other. You're living together. You, you, you're in each other's head because you have that telepathy. Yes. You got that, you're, you're merged, you know, so you have, you feel yes. one another. And um, I, I want you to, I, I want to talk about Glenn. Glenn is her husband, right? And he, he, he's so sweet, but he, tell, tell, tell them how he <laughs> feels about the situation, right? Like, um, like, as far as uh, when we were projecting on each other and what it did to him, or how does he feel about it now? Well, now he's went through a lot of growth, but in the beginning, like when you guys were going through it, because they're going through it. Somebody says that they're going through it now, they're in separation, but they live together. So, you know, it's... Yeah. Well, I had to bring myself to a place where every single day I had to tell myself, what would you be doing if he was not even in your mind or in your space or in your life? Whatever that is, do that thing. Sometimes it was resting. Sometimes it was reading or working out or working on something. But I was always doing, I, I always tried to stay in that place. Right. Because if I was to look at him or he said something to me, it would bring me right back into this this energetic exchange that was not always great. Yeah. I mean, it I think was the very thing that comfortable for both of us. I think the thing that they don't people don't realize is that we project our wounds onto them and that's what we're seeing back. Our counterparts are giving our wounds back to them. They're mostly confused. They have no idea why you're being triggered, they're why you're being emotional confused. because they're not really awakened to the full journey yet. You know what I mean? Like they they're like what's in the beginning, so in the beginning, you know, yes. yeah, 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 and they, and they're projecting. Um, uh, they're definitely they they'll feel your wounds if you're not completely healed. Because for me, I used to do things that um, on the surface I, I was like appearing to be one way, but under the surface I still had this insecurity about something or this doubt or this whatever it was under the surface and I would try to interact with him as if it didn't exist but he could feel that something wasn't right mm -hmm. so he would change the way he behaved mm -hmm. in order to interact with me and that in itself made me start to question the motives that he had because he was altering his energy and I didn't know why well once I figured out what that was and I said oh he's acting out a program that I put there once my trigger, once I started dealing with myself and kind of detached from being obsessed with thinking of wh why isn't he doing this or when is he going to do this or does he understand this or where's his mind? What is going on with him? What, what's happening inside him? And I would ask him frequently, what's, what are you thinking? Because he would be really, really quiet a lot. And um, so it's like those wounds they they uh as i started to heal he he began to play out these programs that were my wounds because see he was counter um changing the way his behavior was 
to uh, not trigger me because he, he saw that something wasn't working, so he started changing the way he was interacting with me. Well, once I rose above that and I was no longer affected and I had healed a lot of those things, well, then I started to see the damage that my wounds had done to him. And I was able to say to him, don't do that. That's, that's, that's something that I put inside you. That's not you. Don't do that. Like he would try to do something for me and I would, it would just, the energy would not feel right. Like right. It, he was doing it because it was a something that I told him that I needed him to do <clears throat> in the beginning because I was operating out of my wounds. So in the beginning, he would be like, try to do something. And, and I would tell him to do it another way because I was in my wounded energy. And so he would compensate that. And then as I started to heal, that no longer worked. Right. So it, it, be, it became obvious to me, oh my goodness, those are all of me. That's me. I projected all of that onto him. And it hurts them really bad to do that. Right. It, it really um, does. It, and it also, it kept him from healing. He could not focus because he still works, uh, you know, a 3D job. Mm -hmm. He works in construction and it's very uh, manly job, very um, unawakened uh, masculine energy. A lot of that right. projecting going on right there. Uh, but right now he still does that. But, um, and then he would come home and then he would have to alter the way he interacted with me because I was in my wounds. And so he never had time to uh, reflect on his own healing or see his patterns or behaviors because he was either dealing with unawakened masculine at work and then coming home and dealing with um, someone that's in their wounds and triggers. And I mean, you can be happy and be nice and pleasant, but energy is energy. And if you're feeling it inside, I don't care how much you try to mask it with your twin, they're going to feel it. Right. If you're anything less than whole, mm -hmm. they're going to be affected by it. You know, I really, I really think that, you know, we get programmed, like we're trying to release all these programs, you know, politics and religion and social norms, Correct. but yet on the outside, there's twin flame programming on what it's supposed to look like or who is supposed to be doing what or whatever. And that's why I'm no longer, it is, it does a disservice to call somebody a divine masculine or divine feminine and then running to twin, uh, running to tarot card readers that are not spiritual guides. They're, if they're a twin flame, they're stumbling through the journey like everybody else. And, and if they're jaded because they don't get the, in, if they're not doing their healing and they're, um, they're not doing their healing and they're not talking to their counterpart. Well, and their counterpart might have a karmic. Well, guess what? All their cards are going to focus on karmics. And then when you get, um, then all of a sudden they start reading about karmics and then everybody out in their audience starts freaking out and their mind starts spiraling. Right. And Correct. they start, Oh my God. And then they run to the tarot Guilty. reader. You run to the tarot Guilty. reader. You know, in the beginning, I, that's what I'm saying, because in the beginning, I was the same way. Instead of focusing on your own healing, which is so important, and that's why I made all the Twin Flame series, and that's what I've been talking about. If they would just stop focusing on their counter, that doesn't mean jump in other relationships. It doesn't mean go in any relationship. It means focus on yourself and just your own healing. Then you won't have to go through trauma with your, uh, you know, all this triggering because you've already did it. Like me and my counterpart, right? It's like, God bless you guys for being able to do what you do and, 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 and being in that relation because I know it's hard. And it's funny because we're all in the same edit. We're still growing. Me and, me and Tracy are at the same level. We're still growing, even though she's with her counterpart and I'm not. We're still experiencing the same things. And um, my counterpart is always, uh, she didn't run away. She didn't run too far, you know, but I'm the one that pushed her away with my wounds. She, she would, we probably would yes. be together if I wasn't pushing her away thinking, oh, we're supposed to be in separation. We're not supposed to talk to each yes. other. Or, uh, she's supposed to be this because they say, oh, the divine masculine or, um, or uh, they say, oh, they're, so they're going to come back sovereign. No, they don't come back sovereign. They're distorted. They're going through their own wounding, just like we are. And I kept pushing my counterpart away due to my own stupidity, listening to all these stupid people. Sorry, people. Listen to all these people, these tarot card readers. And it did my, my connection with her such an injustice. But I would snap out of it and be like, oh, my God, let me con I'm going to contact her. But we both ch ran and chased and ran and chased and ran and chased. The longest time I've ever been yeah. without her is three and a half months, like not in contact. Yeah. 
you know, she stays hiding from me, you know, because she, she's in the unworthiness. She feels unworthy or whatever. And she puts me on a pedestal. And that's how I used to put her. I used to put her on a pedestal, right? I did that with Glenn as right? well. Uh, I, I did that as him, with him as well. And, um, but the, we're, we're all divine and we all carry the feminine and masculine energy within us. And it's not this, uh, it's a dance like you always talk about. It's a dance of energies. Yeah. And it's, it's this union with yourself and it's this balancing of this feminine masculine energy. And when you start to attach to it these labels of what it's supposed to look like, how it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. then you're you're putting yourself in a box where you're you can't expand because you're 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 fitting into a label. Right. And, right. Uh, and and those labels they kind of really constrict you because I mean you may think that you're not like you're just using these words. The words are important, and when you're labeling something like, a, oh, he's the divine masculine, or I'm the divine feminine. No, I am just divine. Right. Because we're and both. Yeah, we're both. Yeah, we're we both have both energies. Divine beings. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and, and we're, we're doing this balancing act yeah. of the two energies. And here's us. another thing. When they run the tarot cards, or t- a tarot reader... And the tarot reader said, the divine masculine is doing this. Well, the divine masculine, you might be doing that. Because I was always right, fitting the exactly. divine masculine. I'm a very action-oriented person. And I was always fitting that role. And I was so confused. I'm like, uh, uh, what's happening? I know that the right. divine feminine was, the divine feminine energy awakens first. But the divine feminine will, energy will also awaken in them. Awaken them to the journey. So, right. In the meanwhile, we're supposed to be working on the distortions on both sides. You can't just have to define feminine and I'm working on just to define feminine distortions. No, you have to work on both right. sides and balance it. But once you get that balance, you, you, I know exactly when I balance because I just started like things started to change for me and the dynamic between my counterpart changed. And, and um, it's like, like you said, you're still working, working on it, the balance, you know what I mean? Yes, it's a balancing act, cause, and I'm not always in balance, yeah. you know. Uh, there was, uh, my light went out. Oops. It's okay, I see you, we see you fine. Can see. you see yeah. me? Mm-hmm. Okay, you can see me okay? We're getting love from right, Berlin, uh, just so you know. <laughs> getting love. You're getting some love. Thank you. But, um, all right, there I go. Mm-hmm. My computer had shut down. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Uh, the, the, it's a balancing act. Right. Um, because I'm not always, I mean, union, I, yes, I feel in union with my feminine and masculine energies within myself. I feel as if there's a balance, balancing act happening within me. And when I'm becoming more balanced within myself, I can, it's as within, so without. Right. So as I begin to balance within, it reflects in my interactions with him. Right. Because he's no longer being, having to, because he was having to be completely, he was so in ego, uh, like guarded, uh, because he's just such a sensitive soul. And um, he had walls up. He was guarding himself from, from me. He used to describe it as he felt like a bug on the ground, already been knocked over. And then here I would come and I'd be like stabbing him with the, poking him and poking him, telling him, go, 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 turn over, can't you do this, go, do it, Right. and he's like, that's what I felt, that's what he felt like, you know, in those early days, uh, when I was still in all of that uh, distorted energy. I just realized I never changed the title of this, still says, like, healing, <laughs> I forgot to change it, to, even though the posters are out there, whatever, but I forgot to ch- change the title, yeah. But okay, so it doesn't matter. Good. They're gonna find out what we're talking about if they join. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a it's a balance. But the whole twin flame dynamic, the whole thing about twin flame is about they think it's about union, but they miss the whole point. It's about union with self. You have to have union with self first. Right. And if you you can't have union if it's not within you, you cannot have union without of you. That's why healing is so, so important. That's why the separation is so important. Well, you guys are 
And don't believe, I mean, I, like I, I want to reiterate the fact that just because I am married to this other person or my counterpart, right? just because we married, when we got married, we were still not really aware of what was taking place. Like right. we, 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 you didn't did, know you were twin flames. You didn't know the label of twin well, flame. We, did. Yeah. we had heard that we were like all excited. Like we had not really mm-hmm. entered the depths of things mm-hmm. when we got married. Right. And, um, it was more, uh, more or less, it was my wounds because we are, we were actually but also, having problems. But also you know each point. other for many years prior yeah, and it was like a ch- 1987. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like we're born twin flames. We're born, at a certain time when that clock, that divine timing is going to go poof and you're going to have that reconnect. But you guys have been kind of chasing each other almost, you know, how long did you say? Like, well, we, we met in 1987 yeah. and, um, and at, uh, we were 13 and then in, um, 91, he left for college. My parents never want, I, I, we were in love. He, my parents didn't want me to date him so mm-hmm. he, he was my long-haired boyfriend and they wanted me to break up all the time they were very controlling in a way like mm-hmm. I, I anyway so uh he went off to college and then i got pregnant at 17 mm-hmm. and by the time i was 23 i had three children i had decided okay this is my life and i married a nice guy i was married for 20 years he he went his way and he ended up being a drug addict for 20 years. Wow. And he never had children, and he struggled with drug addiction. And then um, he did eventually get married, but it was like of a convenience. And um, and then w- in 2012, which was a significant year, right, Shauna? Yes, it was. 2012. Yeah. And um, I had already been like my my marriage had there was nothing there we were just in different places and then he popped up on Facebook and said hey and we talked on the phone and it was all like oh my goodness and we didn't know what to think about it and uh, we wanted to see each other in person so uh, I met him and we talked we just when we but when we saw each other in the physical he had a lot of distorted masculine energy at Mm -hmm. the time i was a mom i was like all mom yeah and it was really strange for him and he was still in his addiction so it's like when we came together and we talked and i was telling him about my world his world did not match my world and so he just like and then all of a sudden he dropped off the planet like within a few days yeah and that was in 2012. three years passed and in that three years he um his wife that he was with at the time just she just felt like he was um cheating on her and, and he was or that because he told her that i had come to visit and um who i was and nothing happened but mm-hmm. she couldn't get past the fact and she was in a lot of bad energy so she but let she, it go but the thing about it is is that and this is what happens when our partners during separation go to other people those people always feel they feel that their heart and mind is with somebody else because because it is right you know and even though he was married or with somebody else his heart and mind always belonged to you it was always there and that's what happens like when the counterparts they can they in separation if your counterpart goes to somebody you know okay it's going to be a lesson for you you know it's going to be a lesson and Uh that's just going to project them back to you even faster really right right because she shut him out so hard and so cold and he tried so hard to make it okay with her mm-hmm. i had no communication with him for those three years mm-hmm. and um on my side of the fence i had decided that i was done with i had let go of a lot of things my children were graduating high school mm-hmm. i had told my my then husband that you know where this is just over we didn't even it was just over mm-hmm. and in 2015 he popped up again and was like hey I said, oh my gosh, hey. He's like, you won't believe what my life's been like since I saw you three years ago. And he described it, and I said, that's exactly what's been happening in my life with my my husband. Mm-hmm. And he said, we need to talk. And so we got together, and within five days, he moved out of his house, left his wife, which they were already separated, and so was I. I left all my security, 
and we literally lived in my van with a mattress. You met. You left a really good job. You left. Uh, you know, financial security. Yeah, right. I left security and everything, and we had no clue. Everybody thought we, but we we were. We didn't need anything but each other, and we did fabulous. I mean, we lived in a van, mm. and it was great. It was the high, I mean, we were just, it was wonderful. We, we were just having the best time. But then, you know, um, within the first four months. Bubble phase. four months. <laughs> Bubble yeah, phase ended. four months. <laughs> The, the, the toxic cesspool that we carry within us yeah. was seeping to the surface yeah. and we began to have things happen and um and that's when the the, the dance started to begin of, of all of that and then mm -hmm. you know we we never left each other I asked him um why he didn't ever leave and he said because he knew that something was special with us that mm -hmm. there was this magical and not only that we were having so many synchronicities that you just could not deny that something was going on. Right. And I'm not just talking about a few numbers. Right. I'm talking about really strange things, even as far as... Kitty white, said this is a beautiful. <laughs> she said this is beautiful. Yeah. So, there was but, a big white... Uh, so so there, people... Had white feathers and... Yeah, but people think, they keep asking me, well, how do you know if you get your twin? You know that that person you is... Spe there's no way not to know. It is, it's... Okay, for somebody who's not with the person, you're, you're in that little bubble phase and then they go away. But it's like when that first initial um, connection is like, oh my God, like you're confused. Indeed. You're really confused. And, and, the, and the first time that he actually really was going to walk away from me, which was at that four month mark. Yeah. He literally said, I can't do this. And I mean, he was, we had just got us a little house. Mm -hmm. We were no longer in the van. Right. And I thought we were just going to, oh, my life is going to be just like, I was so happy right. that we, I was with the person. I didn't got a house. I, I, everything was just, seemed like it was working out yeah. great. And then he was just ready. He, he needed, he was, he needed to go. Something was not right for him. And when that happened for me and he literally started packing a bag and was fixing to walk out the door, my heart literally felt like it was being ripped from my soul. I couldn't breathe. I was like, <gasps> I literally thought I was having a heart attack so bad that he didn't leave. Like I, I literally, and I believe now that it was my heart chakra that was just like blowing out of my chest. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he didn't walk away then. And we had many, many trials and tribulations from from that early stage and i believe that the reason that we went ahead and got married i was in my wounded energy and i kind of forced it on yeah. him i was like let's get married don't you think when things were okay because i was scared that he was going to leave right. if something happened again or if my insecurities began to show like they did at that four month mark and right. i began to do things i wanted i felt as if marrying him would attaching to me and so that was not true. you want to know something? So to, to compare a little bit, like when I got with my counterpart, if I was with her, if I would have, we could have been together probably if I would have pushed her away because it was that wounded energy, but I would have been jealous. I would have been controlling, you know, I, that had to be like the divine beat that out of me. They beat it out of me. She went to somebody else, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh my God, I almost died. I felt like, cause I could, I could feel her being intimate. I felt like I was being stabbed in the heart, like over and over and over. She, and I would tell her and she's like, nah, I don't believe you. And then I'd be like, you were with him this time and this time and this time. And she's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, you, you know, I, cause I, I made I a big mistake though. Wait, in, but I made a big mistake ahead. telling her, I wanted to make sure she knew this connection was because you see where I'm going with this, right? Like I made a big mistake. Mm -hmm trying to tell her everything that she was thinking and everything that she was doing and was freaking her the F out. And then I know Glenn hated that from you, right? He absolutely could not stand when I would tell him what he was feeling or how he was feeling or anything, especially if if I started to understand something about myself, you know, you want to share. You're like, oh my gosh, I know why I did that to you. Right. He didn't want to hear why I did it to him because it was just wrong to him. It's like, I know where that came from. It came from this and this and this. They don't want to know all that. Yeah. They need to do their own healing. Yeah. They, they, he told me one time, he said, I do not like knowing how your mind works and what you're going through because it, it damages me in a way that I don't understand. 
and I don't need that on me because I, I've got enough damage that I'm trying to sort out. And then you tell me what you've got going on, and they naturally, you know, they, they care and they love us. They may want to help, but they don't know how because yeah. it's not their place because it's our wounds and our triggers yeah. that we have. We're the to only ones that can do that. We're the only ones that can do the work for right. ourselves, right? And if you're, if, if, and as I began, like, um, um, as I began to understand the process, I, I got to the point where I was just, uh, I noticed that uh, the reason I kept doing those those patterns like that was because I was seeking outside validation yeah. for what I experienced, and you, it, you can't seek out that side validation, especially from your twin. Like, if you're looking for them to tell you that what you're telling them is your truth, it's never going to happen. Right. You, it, it, it comes from a, a knowingness inside of you. You remember what I said um, that um, when I was in the shower, before we, before we got live, I was telling you in the shower that this thing came to me about, you know, uh, we want to fit. We want to fit this journey into our narrative and into our story, into our life, instead of allowing the um, divine to create the narrative for us. You know what I mean? Because we want to control it. And you can't control or manipulate a divine connection. So even in the beginning when you tried to do that with Glenn, right? You tried all the tricks. And he was not, he just went the opposite, right? Right. And that's what happened my counterpart too. You know, it's like in the beginning we try all these 3D, acting like it's like a 3D relationship and it doesn't work. And it backfires. It does not work like a 3d relationship at all yeah. and it's like you know if you it, just trying to tell him you know uh how how i feel about something or anything like that i would always get these looks that he would be like and, I'm, and then it would trigger me just the look he would give me i would go because i was in my wound right i would look back at him and i would say why are you looking at me like that? What did I do wrong? Are you mad at me? Mm-hmm. It was constant questions like that, yeah. which would would escalate it or make it even worse. So it was like an endless dynamic of that kind of. Yeah. So, so for the people that are just jumping on now, you know, we're talking about um, how she's in union with her counterpart, but they didn't really go through it. They didn't go through separation. You know, uh, they just they ended up getting married. And now they have to deal with all this wounded energy and uh, together. And it's very, um, what's the word? Now, now, I mean, this has been years, you know, you've been doing this for six years with each other. Okay. And um, right. now, now Glenn is showing a lot of growth. I mean, massive, massive growth. growth. I mean, massive growth. Um, and, it, and it's just like, um, and it's really shifted since the eclipse yeah. energy. I, I will uh, tell you also him. in my counterpart, there's been massive growth also. But then I... Like, he's been able to actually verbalize our experience, even though we both kind of knew how it had played out. Mm-hmm. He's been able to actually speak it now. Like, speak his truth. And, right. And, 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 and share what happened for him and, and his perspective and how... He experienced it. You should tell um, them how he's his lens. how he's changed, like how he was before. Because you were saying that he wouldn't even want to even be dealing with me at all, right? You know, I mean, the person, his person changed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Glenn was a very judgmental person. Like, that was some of his things that he's, like, overcome is, like, when we... And he told me that was one of the reasons why he was, like, he said, I pulled out. He told me this last night. He said, I pulled out. He said, I was no holds bar when it came to how I was in the beginning with you he said I showed you my true colors and you laughed at me you loved me and you didn't care Mm -hmm. how I was you know and and he was like he just couldn't believe that that I wasn't offended that he was doing this or doing that I would just but I was in my mind I was like wait a minute now he's being awfully judgmental of people but I would just laugh and be like and uh but but I knew that it wasn't right what he was doing. But he was very judgmental about um, anybody overweight. Now we're both overweight and trying to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I guess I had to gain weight so I had to get over being able to judge people yeah. that are overweight. Or, um, you know, uh, anyone that was gay. But now he sees everybody in a different light. He's now we're best really friends. <laughs> <laughs> he loves Shauna. He loves Shauna. And, um... 
but yeah, he's 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 able. He's starting to be able to see what he needs to see because I'm not projecting all of that junk onto him, and I've done the healing. <laughs> Um, what do I mean when I say I've done the healing? Mm. I don't do anything special, but I don't follow people on social media and get my information because I'm on there. Like, well, let me see, let me see, and then say, okay, well that, and then fit it into my story. Right. I spent a lot of time. I've got a stack of notebooks like this. I wrote about how I felt. I, I spent a lot of time in reflection. Right. I. I quit working, so I, I do not work, and, um, and I spend all of my time. See, to ta- I'm com- that's something that we have in common, and I think you heal faster that way. But I know a lot of people are you are not able to. Yes, we, neither one of us time. work. You know, I mean, like I'm retired, yeah. so it's just like all I do is reflect every single day. You know, every single day it is a lot of reflection. If I had to say what helped me heal. It is self-reflection. Every interaction that I had with him, if it was good, I reflected on it. If it was bad, I reflected on it. I didn't try to have a 3D relationship with him anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I quit. Try. I quit um, for a while. He just didn't want to come to bed when I went to bed, and it's it was bothering me. But then I started realizing why he was doing that. So when I was able to like pull myself away from all of that and observe what was happening. I started to see that I was healing because I, I was able He needed to his own reflect. space. He need, I mean, right. you guys took separation, but it was like under the same roof, you know what I mean? Because he needed to pull away right. from your energy and your, you, you know, because it, it does get too much and it gets intense, so. Because it's big energy. It's mm-hmm. big energy. Those, those wounds are really big. And, and Glenn struggled also in the beginning, like he, he, He's never, no, you know, I talked about his drug addiction. Mm-hmm. He started using drugs at a really young age, but he had a really good family life. But it was just something that happened in his life, and I believe that was part of his soul's Contract. journey to have yeah. this experience. Yeah, to have this experience that he mm-hmm. had. So, you know, do, no judgment on that. And he was able to get off of drugs, um, heavy drugs. Um, no, no. But he was doing drugs, drugs for like program. 20, did you say 20 years or something like that? 20. 20 years, over 20 wow. years. Wow, wow. Good for and him. he still has his teeth and you wouldn't have <laughs> He's healthy. Are you sure? <laughs> he didn't have to be on medications, yeah. you know. And that's another thing which I don't want to veer off. But um, for me, I, I in 2008 and seven, this was before Glenn came along, I had my first bout of depression, I would call it. And I got put on a lot of depression medications, anxiety medications, seeing therapists and all these things. Now, I do not, I do believe those are good for people, that people need those things. But when you are on this awakening journey and you're healing, those are some things that are going to kind of block you from feeling because the whole key to this journey is learning how to feel. Right. You have to feel through it. You have to feel it to heal it, right? Yes, yeah. you have to feel everything. And when you're taking something that is a pharmaceutical, and I'm not telling anybody not to take their medicine, Medica- their saying, prescribed medicine, but, right, yeah. Right, it, because I had to wean myself because when we, he and I came together, he was on drugs. I was on 10 different medications a day. I take zero medications yeah. today. I, I weaned and, myself off of them. I haven't been sick in six years. I think... I haven't... This I think the same too because I was going I had you know I had cancer I was I was mm-hmm. medication I was spiraling in depression they put me on some medication I'm like I can't cry with this medication I can't I'm heal close. I can't heal if I'm, I'm that's okay I'm I'll, my water hold on Shauna you can still hear me <laughs> you can still, <laughs> but it's like you know I I couldn't even cry so I I just ripped the pandaid off I'm like I'm not taking this medication anymore I'm not going to take any of this shit. And then, because yeah. what I was doing was crying all the time, and I, and everybody's telling me that's not normal. I'm an empath. I feel everything. I feel the world on top of my shoulders. And every time somebody's yeah. empath and sensitive to their gifts and abilities, oh, they got ADHD. They're depression. No, they're gifted. They're gifted. They have to learn to control right. it. They got to learn to control it, not through medication. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that's the old paradigm. Mm-hmm. Like that's the old way, and we're here to awaken to a better new way yeah. of a being humans right. basically right yeah we we are elevated 
Well, I wrote something. It's like um, we're programmed. That's not what I wrote. I wrote a bunch of stuff. But okay. oh, it's something like okay. It's like uh, what I was saying about how um, and instead of allowing the divine to create the narrative for us, you know, it's like we try to fit the story into the life that we're already living. And it's the the divine. It's a divine connection. And it says, which it has its own agenda and purpose, and it's to push us out of our comfort zone and to face, uh, to force us to elevate and expand our consciousness by releasing and healing. And that's the only way that we can do it because your consciousness, a lot of these people, they just talk a lot of big words. They're, that doesn't mean their consciousness is expanded. It means they read a lot of books, you know? And a lot of times you, when people are talking, you can tell they haven't lived that experience. You know, they're just talking a lot of shit, which I can't, you know? And, and it's like, the blah 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 and I was doing this in quantum blah ha ha okay well you know people use quantum all the time but it's like they just regurgitate a bunch of stuff it's not their own experience then they want to run to drugs they want to do that hiawasa and take drugs for the spiritual experience no 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 if you're doing your healing you start releasing all this programming my world is magical. I live a very magical right, world right. now. I mean, I always have, but now it's just it's like, boom. simple too, yeah. right? I mean, it's pretty simple. It's just you and the animals. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, mean I have my sanctuary here. My whole, I went out this morning, I hear birds, but I'm always connected to the vine. Always, always connected. Right. So, I mean, there's many things that I do behind the scenes. It's not just do you like TikTok and, and you know, I, I heal. I'm doing, a, I'm healing myself. I'm at the end stages of this, um, this not the journey, the journey's forever, but this uh, right. separation stage between my counterpart because you can feel it. You can start to feel how you're interacting with them. You can feel the dance, the energetic dance. You can right. feel them. They're, they're, they're talking to you more. They're talking. You can feel their walls come down. Oh, I felt a big heart expansion. It's like both yeah. of our heart at the same time. When I, when I contact her again, um, it was like my birthday. She didn't contact me for my birthday. I was like, hey, what? I was expecting to hear from you yesterday because it was my birthday. And I was like, are you, you, know, are you okay? What's going on? And she told me all this stuff that was happening in her world. You know, that, you know. Uh -huh. so it's just like, oh. And she's like, well, I'm really sorry. Don't take it personal. I missed your birthday. But then after that, we just started talking. And, um, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Yesterday we were kind of like doing domestic shit together. I was just like, this is kind of cool. <laughs> like, I know. Yeah, I mean, and Glenn and I do that too. I mean, we do have a, uh, you know, we do have our normal time that we're doing normal things that people do. Yeah. But when we're doing those normal things, we're very aware of the dynamics that are playing out. Like, say mm -hmm. he likes to play golf. We go play golf. Or if we're interacting with other people you can tell that we're like closer together because everyone else is operating on this different level yeah and then uh, an awareness than we are i mean you know uh get questions like you know well what are you doing this weekend i'm always just in the now yeah <laughs> And this weekend has not come yet. Mm. You know, why do you ask? <laughs> you know, it's because our, our, as we as you heal, as you heal, your whole body, everything changes because the journey is not just about your counterpart. It's healing, but it's body, mind, and soul. So we start eat. Right we now. start well, like me. Okay, my diet has changed completely. That's I, what I, like I used to go drink wine. Diet. All I come from a big Italian family. We used to drink wine all the time. We, me and my sister would go work out and drink wine afterwards. You know, it's like, but I don't drink anymore. I don't drink. I don't. Right. I can't, I have to eat pure, healthy foods. I cannot eat processed foods. I cannot eat, you know, I cook for my dogs. I mean, I don't even let my dogs have garbage food. I, de I mean, my cats might get a bag of food, but they eat chicken too. You know what I mean? It's like, you yeah. totally, ch everything about, I am it not is, the same as I was at the beginning of the journey. And these people will yeah. not be the same either. So it's hard for me to, even though I, I understand where they're coming from, I always knew that triggers were for my best and highest good. I always thanked my counterpart, even though I didn't like the experience. But some of these people are just so dramatic. It's so painful. It's painful because you're not embracing it. It's painful because right. you're resisting. That's why. That's why it's painful. Exactly. Because so, the more you resist, the more that it persists. Yeah. So, okay, so you can be with your counterpart and you can have it like, if you, if you, you know, like you. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, you guys are doing, you, you guys are amazing. I love you guys. But it, you, it's, it's hard. It's hard either way. It's hard with them and it's hard without them. 
you yeah, know? it's just a different, it's just a different, um, kind of hard. Like, I mean, embrace what you're going through. Don't, the fact that you're even frust, if, the fact that somebody is frustrated that they're in separation and not experiencing their journey the way that someone else in is, then you're not, in, you're not accepting yourself. You're right. not accepting your journey for what it is yeah. you're trying to compare yourself to someone else outside of you this and say that is you you're wishing for something in the law of attraction you're just pushing it away because you're saying that you don't have you don't what you where you're at is not good enough yeah this journey is and always will be about self-discovery and and inner healing and that in that uh union with self and people can distort it all they want to and they can say it's all kind of different ways but that is the truth of plain and simple you know we we make it hard we make it you know and then fucking tarot card we, tarot people you know making it all kinds of crazy putting crazy shit in people's yeah. head and i'm sorry excuse my language i have to put a little one blurb warning or something but it's like, i can't i can't i mean it's not that hard it's not that hard we make it hard we make it it's all it's for the for the chaser person it's all emotional roller coaster here. We it's all in our mind. It's here. Right. For the runner right. person, it's it's because they're not thinking and using their heart, right? They're thinking with their right. logical mind and they're not using their heart. They ha they have to learn to open their heart and think through their heart's mind. And that's what their journey is trying to get them to do, you know? Correct. Ours Correct. is like get down to Correct. earth, stop put whatever love you're giving out to yourself because we already the, the chaser person already embraces love, but we have to give that love back to ourself. You know, we have to give ourself right. that love. And when we start paying attention to ourself, our world changes, you know? And then they notice that. They're like, hey, we, I feel something. I, I feel that because we put so much pressure on them when we're focused on them and what they're doing, we put, we put so much pressure on them. It's so intense for them. They can't concentrate. They can't do anything. They can't heal. But as soon as we start focusing on ourselves, guess what? They're free to actually have a thought in their head. They're free to start healing and doing your own thing. Am I wrong? Or, you know, you, you're with him. You're correct. You're dead, dead right on that. Yeah. Because, and you can't, you cannot, you cannot trick or play games with energy. You can't just say in your mind, logically, okay, I'm not focusing on him. Right. It's literally you're you're taking your energy and putting it somewhere else, yeah. not your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. Do you know what else too? I was thinking that you know, as as we heal, we manifest from our subconscious. So you can't you can't. Um, what is that thing? You gotta fake it till you make it. Well, you can't because you, can't, you can't, can't fake your subconscious mind. So that's where your um, your dreams, all your fears, everything that's everything that's hiding is in your subconscious. So as you heal, you notice your dreams change, your outside world changes. You know, that's why I manifest so fast. Like if I want, if I think of money, money comes to me. If I say, all right, I want new clients today, boom, clients come to me. Like I want a soul tribe, soul tribe come to me. You know, because you don't have any, you're not blocking yourself. No. That's what happens, people are blocking themselves yeah. from what it is that they wish to have. But you can't fake the subconscious and until you heal, once you heal, you yeah, heal the subconscious, subconscious mind. mind. Yeah. Right. And once, exactly. once then you start, you manifest from here. So once you are really, truly cleared of those blockages and really, truly believe what you're doing and who you are, that stuff starts coming to you. You manifest, you manifest that union too, because you have union within. Correct. Subconscious Correct. clears up when you have union within, you know? Yeah. It all comes from that subconscious layer and all of that wounding and stuff lives down in there and and if you are logically trying to figure it out and work it out you're just you're mm -hmm. in a, a ping pong match with egoic chatter in your mind yeah so i mean we got like 10 minutes is, is anybody have any questions anybody want to ask tracy any questions hello hello <laughs> anybody got questions Am I frozen? Is it frozen? Nobody's got questions, I guess. Nobody's... Any that's final fine. thoughts? That's fine. I, I, uh, no. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you, if you guys, if anybody wants to get a hold of uh, 
Tracy. She is a relationship coach. She's a twin flame relationship coach. And she you can reach her through my website, which is... Well, you got you got a website too, right? I do, but it's not really active yet. Okay, so um, just go through my website, which is... Thank you. Um, go through my website. It's in the, the link is in my bio. And then you can shoot me an email and then we'll set up a session with her like that. Okay? And um, and you can, and they can also, um, you know, I'm, I'm under Awakened Souls Journey. On Instagram. Like my, or my on Instagram, on TikTok, on TikTok, and on YouTube. Um, Awakened Souls Journey. Okay. And, uh, so follow and her. I, she's going to start. She's just my, starting out on TikTok. My, she needs followers. This is my very first time to talk about my experience. I've got so much to talk about. I'm ready to start sharing it and helping others you guys and, i was reading some of her journal stuff it's like she wrote a book i mean she needs to publish that she and I'm, i plan on writing a book that's gonna take me some time but yeah. it's it's been a lot six years in healing mode in a way being in their each other's presence every single day i literally have only been away from glenn for one week in six years. Wow. We but together. you needed that, right? It's when you went to the beach. You really yeah. needed it. <laughs> that, that was that was during. I was. But there was the also beach. a change in both of you too when you came back. Exactly yeah. when I came back. Yeah, because we had that full moon lunar eclipse. I was on the beach and I did a lot of releasing and of all of that. Then when I came back, we had that the um, solar eclipse yeah. that happened just yesterday or day before, and. Um, I could feel a shift when that happened between us. So, yeah, things are in, in motion. So mm -hmm. others may be feeling a lot of change in their personal world, too, and mm -hmm. on their journey. Um, hi. Sylvia says hi. Sylvia says hi. Hi. <laughs> she said hi. So, But um, we got some hearts and some, some um, Earth Angel says well, I eye opening. Really, I'm like... A, I hope that um, maybe I could shine some light because it really frustrates me and it frustrates Glenn as well. Like, mm -hmm. we do look at different twin um, uh, threads, I guess you would call them, yeah. and just kind of get an idea of where people's minds are. And when we read these things, it really just it does not resonate because right. of the experience that he and I have had together. Right like literally together yeah. and all he can ever say is like they just think they want to be with this person they got to have this union with themselves and this person has to be at a certain level right. to even come back into that your life because if they're still in in a certain um uh, all of their 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 bad behaviors and their cycles and their patterns they're not trying to heal. glenn was trying to better himself right like it he no one told him to stop doing drugs. You need to go get rehab. You need help. Nobody did that to him. He, he just decided, I can't do this anymore. And you and know what? It's, it's very important that we say this, is that we cannot heal for them. We cannot rescue them. You have to allow them to be an individual person and grow on their own and blossom. And you need patience for that. You, you keep working on right. yourself. Work on your finances. Work on your home. Work on stuff. Uh, you know, write yeah. your own book. Do the, you know, do it. Be a teacher. Get on TikTok and start talking about your experiences. You know, and it's like right. that's what we're trying to do is is help people understand that it's not about stuff out here. It's all about everything here, and we're trying to shed light because we didn't have anybody to to help us or talk to us like this. And the people that were giving us information it was jaded. It was bad information talking about Pam and pain and um. You know, it's it's toxic. You know, and no, that's not my experience. I mean, it's not. I was healing. Yes, it wasn't my experience either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 it made me question the experience I was having. Yeah. When I would look to outside people, um, you know, I did. I, I did that. I went to a lot of. I went to several different outside sources trying to figure out what was happening. Right. But once you start understanding that. That, that that is not resonating with you. You've got to stop looking at anything, and you've got to go within. Yeah, you got to step got away to, from that. You've got to detach because from everything. This is the thing that cracks me up. People people think in separation, you stop talking to your counterpart, you stop, you know, you run away from them. I mean, if if they're running it's away, like 
like an energetic separation. It may be physical, like yeah. in your case, yeah. and others, but it's also an energetic separation yeah. that occurs. Yeah. It's, it, it happens for you. Everything is happening for you. Everything for is a blessing in disguise, to too. Place. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And you got to really change your mindset and your, perspect, your perspective because, mm -hmm. I mean, once I change my mindset and my perspective, like, this is good for me. This is happening for a purpose. This is for me to heal. This is about me. I appreciate right. it. I tell God, like, the divine, thank you. Thank you so much because... They're acting up. Like, yeah, they want to go outside. <laughs> but it's like, you know, um, it changed my whole outlook and outcome and everything. And I started to heal faster. And things started to happen for me faster. You know, that's why me yeah. and my counterpart have never really been away. Because I stopped talking to her for three. We got a fight over something stupid. And it was really my ego. It's like, I have to check myself. She's not really projecting stuff on me. I'm projecting stuff on her. You know? Yeah. She's just like... What the hell's go this guy was crazy? What the hell's going on there? And then I explain. I'm just like I'm. I'm sorry. I, I come back and I'm humbled. I'm just like because our roles reverse too. So it's like I'm. Hum I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I I was an ego and you know she knows. I mean she knows obviously that we're twin flames and stuff and that we're divine counterparts. And I call her my counterpart to her and I you know I express my feelings to her and everything like that. So it's not like she doesn't know and. You know, because some people will say, does your person know that they're your counterpart? And I'm like, yeah, she knows. She knows exactly. Yeah. I tell her exactly how I feel about her, you know, what I want from her, um, you know. And, like, I say, look, I love you. I'm, uh, you know, I want to I I marry you. I want a home with you. I want a spiritually based business with you. And that's what I want. They're, that's my intentions. You know exactly where I'm coming from, you know. And then I just do my own thing. Do, 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 you know. She knows. Yeah. She always knows. That's what you have to do. Yeah. That's what you have to do. And it's a um and, and that's and that's a blessing. People don't understand that is such oh, a blessing. Oh, they want to know if he realized on his own if he was your twin flame. Um he doesn't like the label twin flame mm -hmm. at all. The way it came about um is that he had stopped it again. We were having all this weird this was early like about within Keep the talking. first I'm year, <laughs> okay, about the first year, he, um, uh, we, were, we were having so many synchronicities, especially the numbers, and then we walked in, he walked into a gas station, and the total was something like 333, three, three. and he said, oh, I need a receipt of that, because my, my girlfriend, she's like, we're seeing numbers all the time, he said, oh, really, he said, y'all probably twin flames. And he was like, what? What's that? And um, The guy at the gas station? Out, the guy at the gas station said, have you heard about Twin Flames? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like that. And so, and then, of course, we were like, I don't know what that was. It was a, a lot of time passed. We didn't, ever, we didn't go look and see what that was. We had mm -hmm. other things. We were living our life yeah. right then. And, um, and he went, and uh, I, at some point, uh, I started Googling what is a twin flame? Oh, I was like, oh, this is us. Yeah. Oh, look, Fits us to a T. <laughs> and look, and I was like, I oh, like super, yeah, this is us. And he was like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, just because he's kind of a jokester and funny yeah. like that. Yeah. But he's always, he's always known that we had a special connection. He said that um, it just no. it came from with. Somebody said, can twin flames be siblings or parents? No, absolutely not. Can be what? siblings or parents that's a soulmate no they can be your soulmate no. twin flames yeah. no no and people say that no. i know that there's i know that there's sites out there to say and they're full of shit no because it's a romantic connection that you have it's like a romantic bond yeah it, it comes it, it yeah and and there's a lot that happens like for for us what happened was that all of my kundalini energy was awakened and it blew every one of my chakras open yeah and i didn't even know what a chakra was right i didn't know what was happening to me i just knew that i was hearing things seeing things i was having experiences i had all See, these wait, 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 wait. in my body let's here's another thing too twin flames have gifts and abilities they come online right. during the awakening process now and we never we didn't know about twin flames when we started you know a lot of these people are looking for their twin flame 
they don't have any type of gifts or abilities. They're just like 3D, whatever. But I mean, I had some type of gift before. It just was like, psh, you know, yeah, came on yeah. huge, you know. So some of these people, yeah. I'm just like, Twin Flames are special. We're special. I didn't go looking for this. <laughs> Neither yeah. one of us. And, and like, it's one of those things is like, oh, you, you're a Twin Flame. I'm like, you know, you really have to... Uh, understand it like it's an experience it's not a concept it's not a mental construct of a relationship it is actually an experience that brings you home to you tracy that makes sense tracy some um cassie said i found my twin flame and i'm in the 5d now well well (laughs) (laughs) answer that shauna no. <laughs> I mean, so somebody asked, how do you know when you're in the 5D? Well, the 5D is when you're getting those downloads and you're getting all that information right. and you're, you're astro projecting and you're like in the high, it's higher realms. The higher realms are higher than 5D. You know, it's like you, we, yeah. we go and like, it, it, sometimes we got to be grounded, you know, it's like 5D conscious expansion that your, your mind is thinking, um, it's like, it's like we understand what the divine is give, giving us that instruction. Uh-huh. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, somebody asked, somebody else asked the question, how do they know if you're in the 5D? I wasn't, I, I didn't mean to continue like it was, I was talking to you, but thank you. I'm glad that you appreciate my light language. So, but it was, um, Sylvia, I believe, asked about the 5D thing. You did. She said she had 5D um, work done on her the other day. Well, how was it? And look, I, I, I have, um, you know, at one point I was really connected to his higher self. I was getting constant information from his higher self. Right. As in, like, he was here and the, the messages would just, like, I would be driving in the car or anything. It would be anything. And I would just feel his energy or hear his voice through my mind and it would and he would comfort me or give me some understanding about the the glen that i was married to because the glen i was married to was becoming a shell of a man because i had just projected so bad and he had just gone into this you want to know something that's interesting is that my my counterpart's higher self if i was sad would come sit on the edge of the bed and always touch me or want to hold my hand while I walked around the past. And I didn't know that. I, I was like, I, my counterpart must be touchy. She must like to touch. And that's part of her love language because her count, her higher self was always touching me and always trying to soothe me, you know, and that's how she is. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's an energetic, it's a feeling. And I want to go back to the, the, the feeling thing. It's so important to understand what we're feeling on this journey mm. and not, um, self-medicate and all these other things because if you if you're not sure of what you're feeling then you really don't know what's coming in you're picking up all kinds of stuff from the collective yeah it's very important to take time to detach and find time for just you right it's been over an hour it's been over an hour now okay. see how it flows but you know what what i would like to do is close and i will since i have people okay. on here that follow and like my light language i will give a light language uh okay. healing and blessing for everybody because we got to go now and um okay said yes and she's so right yeah and don't don't hang up yet okay so I- to schedule tracy for future interviews or to book a session please visit my website